If you're trying to break into cybersecurity, there's a good chance you've heard about two of the most popular career paths out there, the stock analyst and the pen tester. And here's the thing, they sound similar. They're both about finding threats, but they're actually completely different roles that require different skills, different mindsets and different career trajectories. So which one should you choose? Now, I get this question constantly from people trying to figure out where to start. So I thought I'd do a video on it. And the truth is picking the wrong path early on can cost you months or even years of waiting effort on the wrong certifications, on the wrong projects and the wrong skills. Hey everyone, my name is Luke Goff. I've been recruiting now for over 14 years and I've dealt with hundreds of people in both SOC analyst and pen testing roles. Today I'm breaking down the real differences between these two paths, not just what they do, but also the skills you need, the certifications that matter, and more importantly, which personality type thrives in each role. Now, by the end of this video, you'll know exactly which path is right for you and you'll have a clear roadmap to get there. And if you have any questions about this, drop them in the comments. I read everyone and I'll get back to you. So let's get straight into it. All right, section one, what do they actually do? So let's start with the basics. Now, what do these roles actually involve on a day-to-day -day basis? Because I'm sure many of you may be wondering this. Let's start with a SOC analyst, which is Security Operations Center Analyst for anyone who's really new to this and doesn't know that. Now, a SOC analyst is a defender. So you're on the front lines, you're monitoring security alerts, you're investigating suspicious activity, and you're responding to any threat in real time. So think of a SOC analyst as a security guard watching the cameras. Your job is to spot when something doesn't look right. You're then you need to investigate what's happening and escalate serious threats to response team. Now, here's what a typical day looks like. You'll be involved in monitoring security tools like scene platforms. An example of this could be Splunk or Sentinel. You'll be triaging alerts, deciding which are real threats and which are false positives. This is a really common key one there. You'll be investigating suspicious login attempts, malware detections, or network anomalies. You'll be documenting incidents and escalating serious threats along to the serious analysts. Now, often you'll be working in shifts. So this does include night and weekends in many roles. So this is important to bear in mind because if you're someone who doesn't want to work shifts, avoid this area. Now, you need to be reactive. Threats come in and you respond. Now, if we flip that and look at pen testing, which is also known as maybe ethical hacking, a pen tester is an attacker, but the good kind. So your job is to think like a hacker and find vulnerabilities in the systems, find vulnerabilities in networks and applications before the bad guys do. So you're trying to get there before they do and stop them doing it. Think of a pen tester as someone hired to break into a building to show the owners where their security is weak. Quite an exciting role. So here's what a typical day looks like as a pen tester. You'll be planning and scoping pen tests with clients. You'll be scanning networks and applications for any vulnerabilities that might be there. You'll be exploiting the business to weaknesses to demonstrate impact. So for example, gaining unauthorized access or extracting data. You'll be involved in writing detailed reports explaining what you found and how to fix it. And you'll also be presenting findings to technical teams and executives. So in this role, you'll be really proactive. You're hunting for problems before they become real attacks. So if we break that down and look at the key difference, SOC analysts defend in real time and pen testers simulate attacks to find gaps. So I hope that gives you a really good understanding of the two. All right, let's move on to section two, the skills you need in both these positions. These roles require different skill sets. So let's break down exactly what you need to succeed in it. Let's start with SOC analyst skills. Now you need log analysis. So reading and interpreting logs from firewall servers and applications. This is something you need to be good at. Instant response. So you need to understand how to contain and res respond to threats. You then have threat intelligence. So this is knowing the latest attack techniques and threat actors. You need to understand scene tools. So hands-on experience with scene tools such as Splunk, Microsoft Sentinel, or Q radar. They're really popular ones and ones that you need to know. Networking basics. So you need to understand TCP, DNS ports, protocols, things in that nature. And you need a real strong attention to detail. So you need to be able to spot anomalies in thousands of alerts. So you need someone who really 
can have that strong attention to detail. And it goes without saying, because in most cybersecurity roles, you need good communication. You need to be able to write clear incident reports and escalating effectively. So that means writing the report and discussing with the business. Now, SOC analysts don't need to be elite hackers. You need to be methodical. You need to be detail orientated and a good at pattern recognition. Now, on the flip side, let's look at pen testing skills. Now, you need an offensive security mindset. So you need to be thinking like an attacker would. So if that's something that you feel you're good at, this could be a good route for you. Exploitation techniques. Now, using tools like Metasploit, Burp Suite or Nmap. You need basic understanding of scripting and programming. Once again, I always talk about this, you don't need to be a programmer. So if you're new to this channel and you're watching this now, I'm not saying you need to be a programmer. Having a basic understanding of Python, Bash, PowerShell is really important because this is what you use to automate tasks and write exploits. So a basic understanding will help you here. Now you need to have good web application security. So understanding of OWASP's top 10 vulnerabilities. Network and systems. You need to have a deep knowledge of how networks and operating systems work. You need to be good at problem solving. You need to be good at report writing. Communicating technical findings to non-technical audiences. Remember, most of the business won't understand what you're talking about. So you need to be good at communicating and report writing. Now, pen testers need to be curious. I would say they need to be persistent and they need to be comfortable in the weeds of of technical systems. So you might ask Luke, which is harder? Well, honestly, pen testing probably has a steeper learning curve. You really need deeper technical skills. You need more hands-on practice and the ability to chain together multiple techniques. Whereas a SOC analyst is more accessible for beginners, which is why it's often the recommended starting point. Becoming a SOC analyst is, is easier to get into and it, you learn so much in this space that you can learn those skills to move into other areas down the line. All right, moving on to section three. Let's talk about certifications that matter. What do employers actually look for. So if we start with the SOC analyst certifications, go no further, CompTIA Security Plus. Once again, the gold standard entry level certification. Almost every SOC role is this. If you haven't got your Security Plus and you're not sure what certification to take, start here. The CYSA Plus, this is cybersecurity analyst. So focus specifically on the defensive cybersecurity and threat detection. It's a great second certification to get after your Security Plus. That you also have the GCIH, which is the GIAC Certified Incident Handler. This is more advanced. I'm not telling you to do this at the entry level, but it is something to think about down the line if you're looking at that SOC analyst route. It's more advanced. It's focused on incident response. It's highly respected in the field. Now, if we talk about more vendor-specific SIEM certs, Splunk certifications. I have done a video on this previously. Have a look at my channel. It talks through the Splunk certification. It's a great one to do. And you also have the Microsoft S C200, which is a security operation analyst focus certification. My advice would be start with the Network Plus, which I talk about in a lot of my videos, Security Plus, and add the CYSA Plus once you have some experience. Don't worry about advanced certifications until you're already in a SOC role. You don't need them. That is not what you need to break into this role. Security Plus, Network Plus is what you want to start with. Now let's look at the pen test certifications. There are a few out there, okay? If you're looking specifically at this, I'd still recommend getting the Security Plus because it is a, the gold standard of foundational cybersecurity. Get that to start with. Once you've done that and you're deciding to go down the pen testing route, you have the CEH, which is the Certified Ethical Hacker. This is a entry level offensive security cert. It's widely recognized, but it is criticized for being too theoretical. So it is something to bear in mind. You then have the OSCP, which is the Offensive Security security certified professional. This is very hands-on. It's very practical and highly respected. This is the one the employers care about the most. So if you're choosing between this and the CEH, go for the OSCP. You also have the PNPT, which is the practical network pen tester. It's a cheaper alternative to the OSCP. It's still hands-on and practical. It is an option, but once again, I'd focus on the OSCP if you can. Now you also have GPEN, which is a GIAC pen tester. It's an advanced certification, great for experienced testers. Once again, don't start with this, but if you're well into your career and you're getting some experience under your belt, this is one to look at. Now, my advice is start with the Security Plus for foundations, then go straight for the OSCP if you're serious about pen testing. It's hard, but it's the cert that gets you hired. Now, I know I've mentioned other ones there, but it's important that I let you know what's out there in the market. But my advice would be do that. Okay, moving on to section four, salary expectations. So let's talk money. What can you expect to earn in each role? So let's start with the SOC analysts. Now, I'll do this in US dollars. Obviously, I know there's many people watching from around the world, but we'll choose US dollars and we can work off that. Now, an entry level tier one SOC analyst, you're looking at around 50 to 70,000. Mid tier, so 
or mid-level, which is tier two SOC analyst, around 70 to 95,000. And a senior tier three SOC analyst, or could be called a SOC lead, is 95 to 130 US. SOC roles often have shift work, as I've mentioned before, so night, weekends, which can come with shift differentials. Now, that can boost your pay. That is unsociable hours and pay for working overnight, etc. So that will boost it up. Bear that in mind. So let's talk pen tester salary. Now, entry level junior pen tester, you're looking at around 70 to 90 usd so it is you'll notice it is higher than a sock analyst but obviously much harder to get into mid-level pen, pen tester you're looking at around 90 to 130 usd and a senior pen tester red team you're looking at around 130 to 180 thousand plus so pen testers typically start higher and have a higher earning ceiling especially if you move into red team in all specialized areas like cloud pen testing the catch it's harder to land though and that first pen testing job is much more difficult to get than a SOC analyst. SOC roles are far more common with way more entry-level openings. Okay, let's move on to section five, which personality type fits where? Here's the part that no one talks about and it's your personality and it does matter. You're probably a good fit for a SOC analyst if you tick any of the following boxes. You like structure in clear processes. You're detail orientated and you're good at spotting patterns. You enjoy working as part of a team. You're comfortable with shift work and routine tasks. Now that's important because it's common in this role. You prefer defense over offense and you want a faster entry into cybersecurity. So look at those that would be more of the SOC analyst path. You're probably a good fit for a pen tester if you're naturally curious and you love solving puzzles. You enjoy breaking things, albeit in a controlled way. You're comfortable working independently on projects. That's a big part of it, independent. You have the patience to practice and fail repeatedly. That's important. You're willing to put in extra hours learning offensive techniques, and maybe you want deep technical mastery. There's no better role, different fits, as you've probably heard there between the two. Now, let me know in the comments, are you leaning more towards SOC analyst or pen tester? What's driving your choice? All right, section six, how to get started in each path. Here is a mini roadmap for each position. So you've picked your path, what's next? So if you wanna be a SOC analyst, step one, CompTIA Security Plus, get this. It gives you your foundation knowledge to cybersecurity. Step two, build hands-on skills with Seam tools. So there are plenty of free trials and free versions out there of Splunk or Microsoft Sentinel. Follow tutorials on YouTube on practice log analysis. Step three, create projects for your portfolio. Set up a home lab and simulate security incidents. Now make sure you document how you detected and how you responded to any threats. Step four, start looking for entry level roles. You wanna be looking for SOC analyst tier one, security operation analysts or cyber defense analysts. These are the type of job titles you should be keeping your eyes out for. Step five, network with SOC professionals on LinkedIn. Do this a lot. Get your LinkedIn up to date, network on it, reach out to other SOC professionals. What can you learn from from them who do you know in the market who can open doors for you okay moving on to if you want to be a pen tester so you've chosen this route here is the roadmap once again step one get CompTIA security plus start here get your foundation knowledge step two learn networking and Linux deeply you want to understand how systems communicate get comfortable with command line tools once again don't need to be a programmer but get comfortable with basics step three practice on platforms like try hack me that's a great one it's very beginner friendly you have hacked the box now this is slightly more advanced, still excellent to look into. And then you have pen tester lab. Step four, work towards your OSCP certification. Now I know that this is slightly more advanced, but start working towards it. This is the certification that will get you hired down the track. This is the one that stands out to hiring managers. It's hard, but it's worth it. Step five, build a portfolio of write-ups. Document your CTF, your capture the flag challenges. Share it on GitHub and LinkedIn. Make sure people can see what you've done and it will come in very handy down the line when you speak to recruiters or hiring managers, you can show them what you've actually done. Okay, step six, look for junior pen testing roles or even internships. Now be prepared, they are competitive. There'll be lots of people looking at them. So that's why following the right steps is key to get you hired. Now, a recruiter tip for you here, many pen testers start as SOC analysts, they really do. They do this to get their foot in the door, then transition once they've built the correct skills. So if, there's, if you're out there and you're thinking, I don't wanna be a SOC analyst, it's not the route I wanna go, I really wanna to be a pen tester. Don't rule out becoming a SOC analyst first. Trust me when I say it's a great pathway 
for you to go down if you want to end up in pen testing. So there you have it, SOC analyst versus pen tester. The SOC analyst is your path if you want to get into cybersecurity faster, work in a structured team-based environment, you want to focus on defense and incident response, and build a broad security operations foundation. Pen tester is your path if you want to go deep into offensive security, think like an attacker and find vulnerabilities, work on varied project-based assignments, and earn higher starting salaries, but Remember, much tougher competition. So here's the truth. Both paths lead to a strong in-demand careers. The right choice isn't necessarily about which pays more, which sounds cooler. It's about which fits your skills, your interests, and your personality. And remember, you're not locked in forever. Many people start in SOC roles to get experience and transition to pen testing later, or vice versa. The cybersecurity field is flexible like that. So here's my question to you. After watching this video, which path are you leaning towards? SOC analyst or pen tester? Drop your answers in the comments. I read every every single one and I'd love to hear what's driving your decision. I hope this video has helped you. If it has, hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any future career advice. And if you're serious about breaking into cybersecurity and wants personalized guidance, check out my coaching services in the description. I'll build your roadmap and land your first role. Thanks for watching. As always, keep leveling up your career. I'll see you on the next video.